Originals. That was the very first This Is Sports Center commercial that you just saw. He was on Outside the Lines yesterday, the show that he created, and he talked a little bit about what it is he expects he's going to miss. I miss the meeting, the creative process. Those days at about 11 o'clock with a 1 o'clock airtime, something happens. And as we would say here, you blow up the show. We got we to gotta change it on the fly or do something quickly or do a, uh, go longer than a half hour. That's when the adrenaline runs. And, and, and not to wish for ill events in the world. But, I, you know, when Muhammad Ali died, you and I worked together till 4 in the morning. Uh, the Boston Marathon bombing, we worked together uh, for hours together. And that's when you feel that there is a responsibility on your shoulder to get it right. You don't have to be first to bring perspective, to be accurate, and to keep your point of view out of it because it doesn't matter in a moment like that. Those are the things I will matter. I really miss. Now, we got the news that Bob was retiring right at the end of our show yesterday, so I had time to make a few comments on him and what I believe he has meant to our company. And quite simply, I, I would sum it all up by saying, if you look back at ESPN, this enormous thing that has been created over the last 40 years, Chris Berman was the heart, Stuart Scott was the spirit, and Bob Lee was the conscience. And while those two guys, the other two, became more famous, I think, than Bob did, no one was ever more important than Bob Lee was to whatever it is that ESPN has managed to become. So we wish him nothing but the very best of health and happiness in his retirement and hope that we see him soon. And having said that, we welcome you to another hour of Get Up. Jay Will is here. Jalen's coming. Woj is coming. We are live, as always, from above the Heineken River Deck at Pier 17. And here comes the menu. We're getting up with KD. He officially took his first step out of Golden State yesterday. Maybe. We'll tell you why the timing of all of this could make all the difference. That is off the very top. And then the Rockets are putting the full court press on in pursuit of Jimmy Butler. Wait until you hear what they're willing to do to make that happen. And we've ranked the roster of every NFL team and have reached one clear conclusion about which team has the best chance to win. Might the answer surprise you? You'll find out in this hour. Let's go. And we start with the Rockets, where yesterday Adrian Wojnarowski came on this program and told us that general manager Daryl Morey had interest in trying to work a trade that would bring Jimmy Butler to Houston. We have a lot more on this move because as the reporting went on yesterday, it becomes clear that they're willing to put basically everybody besides Chris Paul and James Harden on the trade block in order to try and find a way to bring him in, the one, the only. Jalen Rose joins us live from Detroit this morning. And Jay, let's start there. Jay Will and I talked about this a little bit earlier here. As you hear all the lengths the Rockets seem to be willing to go to try and bring Jimmy Butler in to play with Harden and CP3, do you like it? I love it. I, I really believe that he ultimately gets a five-year max deal with Philly, and this becomes an irrelevant topic. But if you're the Houston Rockets, you've already hit your ceiling. And when people talk about acquiring Jimmy Butler, you can't leave out the most important fact. They're trying to get from under Clint Capella's contract. They gave him $90 million to play basketball. Yes, he can set screens and block a couple of shots and catch a couple of lobs. But you figure you can find other players to do that at a cheaper price. Look at guys like JaVale McGee or DeAndre Jordan. I feel like they can almost contribute to the Houston Rockets the way he has. So to get from under his contract, of course you do what you can to acquire a guy like Jimmy Butler. Jalen Rose, did you just compare JaVale McGee to Clint Capella? Did you just compare those yes. two? As far as efficiency, as far as how yes. much his game, as far as yes. Clint Capella and how much his game has improved over the last three years of his career. Like, so all I'm saying is that, okay, yes. this team ranked last in bench minutes, points, steals, rebounds. And now you're going to take that away to add Jimmy Butler to the squad and take away all their bench or all the hardworking guys like P.J. Tucker. And then you're going to have three guys that are paid over $30 million. You're going to be in the same cap situation. Jay Williams, we just saw the Golden State Warriors lose the championship. However, they lost yes, it because did. of injuries. They Into didn't have depth. depth either. The league has become that. Big twos. Look at the Lakers. They have LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Kyle Kuzma, and they don't even have a roster yet. <laughs> but yet we already feel like that they're going to be a championship contending team. That's where the game is now. It is wide open. The Golden State Warriors probably going to lose KD. Clay's going to be injured. We got to see what's going to happen with Denver and Michael Porter Jr. I love that Utah got Mike Conley Jr. Hopefully Portland can secure somebody in free agency. The Houston Rockets are right there. If you acquire a guy like Jimmy Butler, I think it brings a validity to what you're trying to do with James Harden because they're peers. 
It ain't like in Minnesota where he was the big brother and he was trying to get Carl Anthony Towns and Wiggins to buy in. The Rockets have been trying to get Jimmy Butler on their team for a couple of years. They offered four first round picks to get him. He is a dynamic player. And look at it like, let me ask you this question, Jay. Yep. If you're Jimmy Butler, who are you better long, who are you better the next two or three seasons with? Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons or Chris Paul and James Harden? Well, if I get the Super Max and like you said before, then I'm staying, if I get the Max, I'm staying in Philly. But I, I will say this though, the, the, the dynamic personality. You didn't answer, between, you didn't answer. Your three piece suit is amazing. Take money out of the handsome today. But I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think they can win with James Harden. I, I'm raising my hand. I don't think they can I win with James Harden. I answer your question, Jalen Rose. To me, the question is undoubtedly Philadelphia. You are much better off trying to win a championship with the pieces they Philly. have in Philly than the pieces they have in Houston, not only based on conference, which everyone always says the East is easier. I'm not even 100% sure I buy that anymore. But there's no question to me that Embiid and Simmons are on the ascendancy. They're getting better. And in Houston, they're getting worse. I think the window is shut on the Rockets. If I'm Jimmy Butler, I know he's from that area, but I'm much more interested in staying in Philly and trying to make a run than I am in going to Houston. The reason why it seems like Philly's the easier path is because of the conference that they play in. It's not because both of their top players doesn't. By the way, they're no perfect players. So if you want to look deeper into the box score, I had Joel Embiid second team all NBA. He's a fantastic scorer, can shoot the three, can rebound, can block shots. But he's going to miss a lot of games due to injury and to load management. Is Ben Simmons going to be able to make a shot outside of the paint? What's going to happen with Tobias Harris and J.J. Redick, Jay Williams? You do know that the Sixers don't have depth either. That's what's happening with most of these squads now. They become so very top heavy that a guy like Jimmy Butler, who's an all NBA caliber player, also all of a sudden takes you from being a team that is going to be a top four in your conference to a possible contender. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But we should save all of these um, Hypothetical words for arguments. later in our lives because <laughs> all he's going to do is get a five-year max deal to stay in Philly. Then let me leave it there on that thought for a moment because I have a bunch of other places I want to take you to, guys. Let's go to Kevin Durant next, who did take, as I described it earlier, the first step towards his departure from Golden State. Now, this was a formality. He opted not to opt back in for the final year of his contract. It does not mean he is leaving Golden State. It just means all his options go on the table. He can re-sign for the max, a super max, if you will, at Golden State, $221 million over five years. Or he can sign with another team, a la Brooklyn or the Knicks or even the Clippers seem to be the other viable option out there and that team could offer him four years at 164 so that's one fewer year and 57 million fewer dollars and Jalen I know I'm going to start with you because Jay Will broke down all these uh, pros and cons earlier in a really fascinating look at the decision that KD has to make and where do you Jay uh, Jalen excuse me place the significance of that extra year and the extra 57 million dollars how important would that be to you and should it be to Kevin Durant well, if I was me, I'd take all of the money I can. I ain't thinking twice. But, I but I'm not the kind of player that Kevin Durant is. And so, therefore, he can play the long game. You just had a conversation about the league thinking about shortening the season, which, by the way, I hate that idea. That's another topic for another day. But if you're going to shorten the season, that means you're going to give longevity to the players. And I got news flash, Greeny. Whether it's 82 games or 62 games, and you're not going to like this, people still going to miss games due to low management. Because I told him that, Jalen. I told him that. He didn't like it. I told him that. He didn't like it. The the, the low management ain't about the rules. It's about the players want to compete every night and play the game that they love. I had a season where I played 83 games. We used to take pride in playing all games all season. So therefore, if you Kevin Durant, you can play the long game. Yes, you might walk away from 50 mil today, but ultimately, as long as he wakes up in the morning, he's going to be a guy that can get you 50 from the floor, 40 from three, 90 from the field. I mean, 90 from the free throw line, one of the top two or three players in the league. Ultimately, longevity, he's going to get all of the money that's coming to him. Another caveat on top of what J. Rowe said, 
they, they do so much business, like they've invested in Postmates, uh, their relationship with his shoe deal. So you have all this ancillary income from all these other business transactions that make up for that loss. Well, KD well. is, is a, obviously a person in a unique circumstance. All right, guys, I'm going to let everyone in a little bit behind the scenes here. We have been pausing to some degree or, or, or stalling to some degree because I'm told that Woj has been